Welcome once again, everybody, to another edition of the Nick Saban Show, along with the head coach of the Crimson Tide. I'm Chris Stewart. Coach, congratulations. One of the toughest, best college football venues in America at Tiger Stadium, but your team wins at 29 to nothing. I was really proud of our players, man, to come in here and compete the way they did. This was a tough atmosphere against a really good team, but, you know, we kind of wanted to make a statement, too. You know, a lot of people questioned our schedule, strength of schedule, and now we're finally going to play a really, you know, top five ranked team and uh, in the tough environment, and there wasn't a better opportunity to make a statement than the scenario we were in today. So uh, I was really proud of the way our players responded, and I mean, it was a great team victory. Defense played really, really well. Offense did a great job of controlling the tempo of the game and kept the crowd out of the game because we had the ball, you know, really a lot in the first half. Even though we left some money on the table and didn't score a couple times when we could have, uh, it was a great win for us, a great team win. This had kind of an old school feel to it, didn't it, Coach? You, you had some big plays in the past game, but you had a lot of stuff done between the tackles in the run game. Yeah, we actually ran the ball better in this game than probably we against a really good front than what we have, you know, all year long. And um, I think, you know, that's something that we knew that we needed to do. And uh, we were very, I was very pleased with the offensive line. And I, I tell you, when we finished the game, uh, went down the field, um, ran it nine times in a row and scored. I mean, that's how you're supposed to finish a game. Finished it strong indeed. First half pretty strong as well. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. 102,000 strong, but finally, the talking is done. Time to play ball. Empty backfield. To a Tonko Valoa with three wides right. Here now to a play action fake. Throw across the middle. Catch at the 38 yard line. First down Alabama on the first play from scrimmage. Everybody is set. Man in motion. Jacobs here now the fake inside. The throw across the middle. Oh, beautiful one hand jumping diving grab by Henry Ruggs of Uni for a first down. Spectacular catch by Henry for a 14 yard gain. Good game. Better catch right there from Henry Ruggs. It was behind him. Pulled it in with one hand. Tua holds his arms in the air, then points. Najee Harris repositions to the left of the quarterback. Here's the snap. The fake to Najee, the throw in zone. Touchdown, Alabama! Henry Ruggs, beautiful throw, and Henry Ruggs positioned beautifully. Running back behind Burrow. Jefferson in motion, three wides to the left side. Faking it to Brunson. Quarterback stands in. Quarterback looking and going right on him, and he's going down. Quinn and Williams, who comes up dancing. Whenever it starts going right on you, that means there's all sorts of crimson jerseys in your face. Pressure off the edge. Tua stands up, looks far side. Waddle makes the grab. Stays in bounds. First down at the 48-yard line. What a great catch by Jalen Waddle. He had his feet anchored on that sideline. Here now, Thomas Fletcher to snap it to Matt Jones. A 23-yard field goal try. It is up. It is good. It is good. And Alabama has taken a 9 to nothing lead. Seven remaining in the opening half. Here now, Tua fakes pressure off the edge. Tua steps up. Tua throws long towards Judy. It's going to be picked off by LSU. The first interception of the year thrown by Tua as Todd Harris, who came in to replace the injured John Battle, picks off LSU's 15th interception of the year. Morrow to the near side. Other men in motion, that's Sullivan coming to the near side. Here now, the play action fake, and in comes the rush on the quarterback. And do they get him in the end zone or at the goal line? It'll be at the goal line. There will be no safety. But Dylan Moses and Anthony Jennings came in and just missed getting the quarterback for a safety. Going left to right. Tua in the shotgun. 
timeout remaining in the half for Alabama. Tua gets the snap. Looks, sets up across the middle, finds her, Smith, touchdown Alabama! Touchdown Alabama in the end zone! 25 yards, Tua to Irv Smith Jr. with a minute 15 remaining in the half. Alabama will take a 16 to nothing lead into the locker room. Coach, we talked about your team running it well, but your defense made sure that they didn't run it very effectively. Well, we did a good job. We affected the quarterback uh, on the passes. Uh, we created a lot of situations that were positive for us on third down, so they were only two for eight in the first half on third down, um, you know, and really stopped the run extremely well up front and allowed us to play a lot of split safety coverages because we could stop the run which really helped us in the back end not giving up explosive plays. So the two things that we really wanted to accomplish in the game was to be able to stop the run and not give up explosive plays, and we did that really well in the first half. We've got a lot more coming up. Stay with us right here on the Nick Saban Show. 16-0 at the half. Coach, what was the message to your team? Well, don't let up. You know, there is no scoreboard, which is what I always say to them. Uh, but in the situation that we were playing in here, if they got the momentum of the game, it could be devastating. All right, so both sides of the ball needed to reestablish the tempo of how we wanted to play in the second half. And I thought we did a pretty good job of that. We moved the ball on offense, even though we didn't score. Uh, we changed the field position. Uh, we got good field position on defense. They moved the ball a little bit. But when we had to make stops, we made them. And I thought it was critical when they had the kickoff return. All right, and then we went in three and out and stopped them. And uh, then we moved the ball out of the hole on offense. So I was really pleased with every situation in the game where we had to answer the bell, we were able to do it. Let's take a look at how the Tide did it with these second half highlights. The second half highlights are brought to you by the Ortho Sports Center at St. Vincent's Birmingham. Care you can believe in.
shot. They don't come any bigger than that. No bigger play than what Matt Wilson just made tonight to end this game. It's 29-0. They're driving on you. You're trying to preserve a shutout, like you said. You're playing cover two. Matt Wilson is the middle runner. Quarterback's laid down the middle. He shows his athleticism there. What a beautiful interception. 29 to nothing, the final. And coach, you've talked about how the depth of this team is one of the strength, but you need certain people to step up. And Damian Harris was one of those that stepped up in a big way tonight. Well, I think you got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line. I mean, we had 281 yards rushing. Uh, those guys had to be blocking somebody, and that's a pretty good front that they have. Uh, all of our backs did a really good job. I think Najee Harris had 83 yards, but Damian had one of his best games against one of the toughest teams, which is what he usually does. We've got a lot more coming up. Stay with us right here on the Nick Saban Show. Coach, you led this one throughout, but where was the turning point in your mind in this one? Well, I, I think the big turning point was when we scored right before the half. You know, we threw an interception. And they got the ball in the three yard line. We went three and out on defense, got the ball back in fairly good field position and scored in like 27 or 30 seconds on a long pass to Irv. But to get up 16 nothing, uh, I think was was really big in this game and scoring right before the half always creates a momentum situation for your team when you do it. And it's a little bit of downer for the other team. So I think that was the real turning point. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, that was good, huh? Good job, Coach. Yeah, I need some party fun. snacks, too. <laughs> <laughs> Only guy that can interrupt the show. <laughs> Coach, we've talked about a lot of these new faces on your coaching staff this year. Another one of those gentlemen, Jeff Banks, works with your tight ends and obviously with special teams as well. well. Jeff's been a great addition to our staff. He's a really good recruiter, but we wanted to change some things on special teams philosophically. and. Uh, he has done a fantastic job, but what people don't understand is when you lose players, where it really affects you a lot is on special teams, because the guys that were playing on special teams are now playing all the time, so you've got to be developing other players all the time to play on special teams, and he does a fabulous job of that, and the players really respond well to him, and he's done a really good job with our tight ends as well, so we're really pleased that he's on our staff. Jeff Banks spent some time talking with our own Maggie Hetzel as he goes Mercedes-Benz All Access. Jeff Banks, best teams coordinator and tight ends coach. What would you say is your own personal coaching philosophy? I think the biggest thing is you got to look at your personnel. You got to evaluate your personnel. You got to put the pieces of your personnel in the right places. And then you've got to keep the scheme simple enough so you can teach it so it has a progression to it. And then you've got to execute it at the highest level as fast as you can. So, I mean, my philosophy is look at our game film at the places I've coached. If it shows up that way, then my philosophy is working. If it isn't, then I need to figure out a better philosophy. When it comes to special teams and tight ends, obviously you got to instill a lot of leadership as a coach. What qualities do you instill into your guys? You know, we work for one of the greatest head coaches in the history of the profession. So number one is to be a good student of what he's teaching. I mean, I think that's number one job of an assistant is to reinforce what the head coach's message is and what, how he works with our kids in leadership. And then the second part is, you know, different guys need different motivation uh, to be leaders. Some guys are better leaders just showing. Other guys are better leaders talking. This group naturally has leadership ability. I mean, just because you're a great player doesn't mean you're a great leader. You might do it in a different way. And so that's what I'll, that's what I'll talk to them about individually. Anything you wanted to say to the fans as a new coach, though? No, just that, you know, I mean, it's an honor and a privilege to coach at the University of Alabama. And I think that's what we come in every morning knowing is that it is a privilege to coach here, and we want to make sure we continue the tradition of winning national championships. Thanks so much, Coach. You got it. Thanks for having me. Coach, you have had a lot of different assistant coaches during your time here at Alabama, but one consistent has been your strength coach, Scott Cochran. How have that helped you with continuing the process? Reggie, I think Scott Cochran has about as big an impact on developing the intangibles in our program. I'm talking about work ethic, toughness, guys being physical, learning how to give effort, learn how to finish, because he spends as much time with the players as anybody, whether it's in the weight room, in the off-season program, in the summer conditioning program, uh, when the players are out, the coaches are out recruiting. So uh, I think his impact is probably immeasurable, and, and the consistency of him being there and establishing that has always been a real trademark of our team. Coach, you brought a lot of guys on your roster back to their home state tonight, and among those is the pride of Ruston, Louisiana, Isaiah Bugs. 
Yeah, I've never seen him happier than after the game. <laughs> he, he's not a very emotional guy, but he was he was really emotional after the game. He was really happy, but he's come a long way for us. I mean, he's you know done well in school. Uh, he's improved as a player, uh, and he shows a lot of leadership in terms of the kind of competitive toughness he plays with. Maggie Hetzel talked with Isaiah Bugs. Isaiah Bugs, defensive end, University of Alabama from Wrestling, Louisiana. You're coming from a junior college, but when you had to make that decision of where you wanted to go after your two years there, why did you choose Alabama? Uh, I chose Alabama because of the stability of the coaching staff. I knew everybody was going to be here. And most of the other schools that recruited me, they didn't stay in touch with me or every single day, which Alabama did. Yeah, junior college was tough. Like I said, you don't have all the facilities, the coaches, and you know all the nice equipments you have here. You know, at junior college, you stayed in the dorm, three people into a dorm, just one room and three beds in there, bunk beds. Basically, it was just a grind all the way through. You kind of have to step up as a leader this year. Where are you finding your leadership for the defense? Well, you know, I'm finding my leadership very quickly. You know, I just set the standard every day, do all the little things right, even when I'm off the field because all the young guys are watching. So that's the main thing, make sure I do everything right. You know, there is a video that went viral of you playing the piano for Coach Saban and Miss Terry in their home. Explain to me the moment. How did it happen? Uh, Coach Saban didn't necessarily know I know how to play the piano. Neither did Miss Terry. And when I walked into his house and I seen the piano, I decided I was going to play it. And when I played it, they both were shocked. And actually, Miss Terry sat down and played with me. So, you know, that was kind of like a buddy to buddy moment thing. And Coach Saban enjoyed it. He was very shocked, though. You know, Coach Saban told me, you know, the first day he started recruiting me, uh, we don't recruit junior college players to come in and sit down. But he also said nothing was going to be given to me. So, you know, I had to come in and work hard and buy into the program and the standard. And, you know, everything went in the right place when I did that. Coach, What's Next is brought to us by AT&T. And What's Next is a trip back home, another tough SEC opponent in Mississippi State. Well, I told the players after the game, now you know what it's like and how you feel when you do things right. And I'm really, really proud of you. But we're going to have to do it again because we're going to have to play another good team, you know, in our league. Um, and our goal should be to be able to compete against the best teams that we might have to play against. This is going to be one of the better teams, and we're going to have to go get ready. I mean, we got 24 hours on this one, and then we got to get ready for the next one. That'll be a 2:30 kick at Bryant Denny Stadium. We look forward to seeing everybody there next week. Congratulations on the win here tonight, Coach, and we'll see all of you next time right here on the Nick Saban Show. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Golden Flake, the official chip of the Crimson Tide, by the University of Alabama, where legends are made, and by. Tiffin Motorhomes, made to move you by Nissan, proud supporter of Crimson Tide Athletics, by Trustmark, people you trust, advice that works, by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories, by Cooper Tires, roll tide on Cooper Tires, and by AT&T, the official wireless provider of the Crimson Tide.